Hello everyone and welcome, this is Jack B1024, and welcome to episode 16 of our Dynamic Factory. In this episode, we're going to be starting up our train storage system, so that we can start dynamically changing our production facility and our furnace facility. So let's get started. First thing we're going to need, is we're going to probably need a bunch of rails, yep, and we're going to need Again, some more rubber ports, some more construction bots. The, the usual stuff that we've needed for the last few episodes. So where are we going to build this area? For our train storage? I reckon we build it just here. For the moment, it's not quite big enough. Ooh, how close are these? Okay, not too close to our pollution. So we'll build it up over here. And at the moment, what are we going to need to be able to store? Uh, iron gear wheels, iron plates, copper plates, and that is it. That's all you need to be able to make that science. So that's easy enough. Actually, what is our... So you're unloading, you don't quite have enough yet. Okay. We're going to need a lot of iron. All the things we're going to be building, I'm actually going to change. There we go, the iron gear wheels. Let's change it to not equals two. That way we'll output an iron gear wheel of one, which should turn. Hmm. Oh no, equals. Yep, that's better. Cool, so that'll be going to our iron drop-off station. Which means this isn't going to be getting used for the moment, but that's fine because we actually need all our iron ore going to our bootstrapping factory. Perfect. So we're going to, again, want probably another five robopods. How many have we actually got up? 38 already. And that's okay. Get another five. Uh, another two. What are you low on? You're low on circuits, aren't you? Yep. Because we're low on iron. That's okay. What else are we going to need? It's be. going to be fairly circuit heavy today, I think, as well as go down there, being rail heavy and just clearing areas heavy as well. Hmm. Okay, so that should be everything we should need to get us started. Hmm. Let's get some copper and some steel so we can make some more. A bit more steel. Good. Large electric poles. Okay, so we want our train to come across here, and this will be our storage area. So that'll be fairly simple to set up. Just bring the trains. We can hook around the top there to take it back onto the line, so that's good. So let's see. this belt underground so that we can bring this on. Let's see if this is long enough for our train. It 
should have a smart train stop over in this chest over here. Which will save me from having to make any more, and let's pick up one of these. Put it down there. Cool, they're all connected to the same network. So our smart train stop can go here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that seems to be enough room. Hopefully. Now the issue is, I put another train in there. It's kind of two spots, yeah. We we'll use red inserters. Good. That's what we'll do. And so now just bring this back to this somehow. And that's all inside. Okay. So, our train that will be storing its contents will come in on this line. Our second train will come in on this line. These inserters will fill the train up with the contents. And then the train will be able to leave and go into its storage bay, which will be down here. Now these trains are going to be longer than uh, two locomotive six wagons. I think I'll make them two locomotives go 14 wagons so they'll be twice the length it should hopefully be a good length because they're going to be storing a lot more than just one single train's worth of items so let's go one okay we need some steel for the second two now we just need a bunch of steel for all our our wagons and iron plates as well. Mm. Okay, if we want another 13 wagons, that's another 13 times 20, 260. There we go. It's our steel done. 260 gears as well. No, half of that. 130. So we've almost got enough gears. Yep. And, okay, 260 iron plates. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're gonna need more than one train, but we'll start with just one. And set it up so that we can easily just add more. So from here, we want to be able to head south. Yep. And then we're going to need storage base this way. Start there. Okay, our first storage bay can be here. And these storage bays are going to be very long. In fact, probably this whole area here will be used in storage. Except we may move it eventually, but for the moment we'll just use here. Because remember, these trains are super long. Now, okay, you don't have any more smart train stops, so that's fine. We're going to need two, and we're going to need signals. This is the first time we're going to actually be needing signals. That means we're going to need iron plates. So 
So these signals are going to be used to basically control our trains and our storage network and set it up so that we can actually load our trains correctly because one of the issues we're going to have is our train in the storage station is going to be 14, yeah, 14 wagons long while our unloading train is only six. So we've got to set up a network a system that can basically load the first six carriages then once they're loaded it'll move through load the next six and then the final that'll be it actually no the final two yep except that may not work perfectly we might want to go one at a time so first thing we'll need train stop now these stops are going to have a different name to our normal number underscore name these are going to have the letter S with a number and storage bay. Now the reason for this is that these two train systems are going to be completely separate. If I can, I'm going to even not uh, let their rails touch. So as you can see, their rails aren't going to touch here. And this is going to go on, you know, in this section where these trains won't be able to go. The reason for that is firstly, the trains are different length. That just makes the whole network easier if we know that every train that's on this network is two locomotives six wagons while every train on this network is two locomotives 14 wagons and because they have different purposes the trains over here are designed to you know go to whichever station they need to pick items up from and deposit it wherever items are needed while the trains over here are just meant to be long-term storage of items So that's one of the reasons why these are named differently, because they're not part of this network. Also means that the trains that are on this network are not going to use this global mapping. They're going to use, if you see there's a U station mapping that uses this global mapping, they're going to use their own mapping, which is the numbers are uh, these numbers here. And you'll, you'll see the difference when that gets set up. Meanwhile, this is going to be station on our global network yeah it's just thinking should I do it in hex but you can't type these in hex I doubt it and this one's going to be storage loader so this is where we would load items into the storage and we'll have a separate station somewhere down here where we can unload items from actually we might we might even set it up here where we can unload items we'll see That's our storage loader. I doubt these can. Oh! What happens if I try to put A in? A is not a number. Okay, cool. So, no, these are our numbers, not hex. Which is what I thought they were. So, we'll just power that up. So, we can bring a train in here, and that'll work fine. Now what we'll need to do is we will need signals. Here we go. 10 be enough. We'll, we'll start with 10. And they're going to take water craft. So while we wait, I'll run off and get some solid fuel. Because we're going to need fuel to power these trains. Oh yeah, actually I wanted to check something. Here we go. I think there might be an issue with these. I thought about the twin episodes. That because they're equal to zero, there might be an issue with that and I might have to change it to less than zero. Now we want this to be in line with that, so that would be there. That means that our first train will come up and it will stop at this light and it'll get filled up. Where, how far away do you go? Okay, we're gonna need another one there, just so that we can build this out pretty far. And with this, we can actually check how far 
it needs to be. So fill that up, fill that up. Okay, there we go. So the only two locomotives these trains are going to be slightly slower, but they're not really going to be used too much. So hopefully we can set up a good system so that they'll be here when they need to be. Mm. Yeah, we can set that up so that they're here when they need to be. And it won't matter that they're slightly slower. Now is this long? Not yet long enough. That won't actually fit. Okay. Take away these trees. Wait, why? Yeah, that's right. Okay, our logistics network can go to about here. Let's actually take away these trees. Okay, it's too many trees around here. Keep getting caught. There we go. Let's give you a big electric pole. We'll put another one here. Another one there. Okay. And that can go there. Train's actually bigger than the screen. That seems to be correctly lined up at the back. So if we keep those extra pieces, that'll be more than more than enough. We can bring this line down. Bring that line across and uh, trying to figure out what I'm trying to do while it's both dark and I can't directly see. There. That should be correct. Let's go light there. Yep. So we'll put a light there, there. There, there. There, there, and there. We can give power to, and cool. So let's see how all these construction puts are going. They seem to be going good. Now, do I want to get the last one lined up with it. This will be able to unload into all. This would be all but first, all but second, all but third, fifth. Um, I think that should be fine. If we have it stop there. So if we have it start at this signal here, and we have it, this is the last position it will be in. That means that this carriage here can never unload into any of these and wagons here. This wagon here won't be able to unload into any of these. This wagon here can't unload into these two. This one can't unload into this one. And it also means that this carriage here won't unload into any of the first five because it will start there. So the first five would be in these five spots. But I think that should be fine. And you are... Yep, yeah, okay, because there's multiple... Well, there's now a loop and only one signal on the loop. 
Okay, let's get rid of all these trees. That's fine. That seems to be the correct spot. So this would be S0002 storage bay loader. Okay, so this train, it will go to storage bay. Do we want to make it a circuit condition? Yeah, we'll make it a circuit condition. Uh, it's got to have a destination somewhere. And then it will go to the storage bay loader. And we'll go to second condition again. Uh, this is going to have its own line called storage bay. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, we want to go to signal number, to signal number. No, we want to go to one. So whenever it gets to the loader, it wants to go to the storage bay. Whenever it's at the storage bay, it'll want to go to the loader. I believe that should be fine. We might change the loader actually to be that. Yeah, I think that might be a bit better. The reason why I'm using signal number here is so that in the future I might have multiple storage bays and so from here you can tell it which storage bay to go to. So you know there might be, so there's a storage bay in this section here, there's a second bay over here, a third bay over here and a fourth bay over here. Uh, it can determine, oh bay 3 is empty so go to bay 3 and it'll come over and stay in this bay over here. But for many of the bays it'll want to come back to here or actually it could go to the onloader. So in that case always go to the signal number, that's easy enough. So let's see, you go to the loader. Okay. Yeah, that looks like the perfect spot. So now what we want to do is basically set up where all these signals will be. Ooh, can we really not? Hmm, signals are going to have to go two at a time because there's... Because there's uh, no way to put a signal here so that they see how the new signal isn't lined up with the locomotive. That's on either side of it, so that's a bit annoying. Where's that locomotive at? So it'll be every two then. That's that's a little annoying. I didn't realise it would do that. Mm, should hopefully be fine though. So go to the storage bay. So what we want is we want the train to stop here then to stop here, then to stop here, then to stop here, then to finally stop here. And we can give this a normal signal as well. Okay, that looks all fine. And lastly, yeah, this is all going to be one block. I think that should be all set up correctly now. The only thing we have to set up is this circuit con the circuit conditions for each of these lights. So let's think how we do that. It can be a reset light. Yeah. Or we could have a reset light here. That could work. Yeah, I have a light here. So if this light goes red, it means there's a, there's a train between these two lights. 
In that case, we want to have these lights turn off in sequence, basically. We'll turn green in sequence. I need you to be red. Once this one goes from red to green, we will reset. Yeah, okay. So... From red to green. So we'll do a... No, it's a arithmetic and a, a decider. Get the green value times by negative one. Output the green value. Green value is greater than zero. Reset. One. Okay, so this decider combinator will output R is one whenever we want to reset our whole waiting circuit. Now for the actual condition that will control it. Hmm. I also want to know when this is red. Yeah, that's fine. We'll put put red into a counter. These read anything reset the counter. When the counter gets to a significant number, we can go. Okay, yeah. Just thinking to myself, and I've figured out how we're going to do this. We're going to use a memory cell, and this memory cell will reset. What signal will we reset on? Uh, let's reset on. Reset on black, why not? As long as black is zero, output everything you're getting inputted. And we only want the red signal. So red plus zero, output red. Oop. Yep. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do Build up a bunch of these inserters. As these will be transporting items from one train to the other. And what we want is we want our own circuit that basically works on an inactivity condition. So basically the train will wait here, wait till it's been inactive for a while, or these inserters are inactive for a while, then it will go to here. Wait till they're all inactive for a while, then it will go to here, wait till they're all inactive for a while, go to here, wait till they're all inactive for a while, and then go to the end. And wait till they're all inactive for a while, and then it will get told to go to a station. So to read if these are inactive, now let's actually connect these two up as well. And I should, oh, I okay. If I don't get the train lines, and I can do that. Don't need those three. And I didn't actually give these a condition. We want to read hand contents on pulse mode. So have they got anything in their hand? Or do we want it on hold mode? Hmm. Why did you not? I mean, either mode will work fine. Let's go hold. Did I? Yeah, I did just disconnect that. So all of these inserters will be reading what their hands want. Now this resets if black is greater than zero. So we'll put the output of this into a decider. If they've got anything, output a single black and send that through to this one. So if these have anything in their hand, this thing will be reset. Now the next thing we want Yep. Okay, as long as R is zero, output 
everything. So we'll have another memory cell here. It will read not your output. Your output's going to go into here. This is going to say if Fred's greater than mm, 60 ticks a second. Let's give it. Probably don't need to give it too many seconds. We'll give it. Give it five seconds. So after five seconds, I'll put a single black. Equals 300. That's a better condition. Output goes to there. Input goes to there. So this will output a black value of one every five seconds, which will reset this the side of combinator. So it'll start counting again. It'll also increment the black counter on this decider combinator. So these, yeah, and that can then see how far we can connect these. So there. And two out there. On the red line, I believe. Uh, no, we'll do it on the on the green line. So depending on the value of the black coming out of this one, will depend on which of these lights will be turned on. So this will be closed if black is less than one. And we need to connect you to the circuit network. So let's just connect these all to the circuit network. Yep. Okay. This will be black is less than two. The next one will be three and four and so on. And when black if black is less than four. So if black is four, you're green. Black is five is when we want you to go to the next one. So like that to there. Black equals five. Output your destination that you're getting. Just telling you where to go next. Do we have an arithmetic combinator? Don't seem to have one. Okay, we'll use a decider combinator. Just that's what we have on us. You go to there, you go to not there, a lot of light, and you go to the station. There we go, okay, you pass through the destination, you turn on when they've got a destination, and you will say the destination is that's one, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. One. Okay, good. We should be ready for a, a live test. The only thing we're missing now is you send out an R value when we need to reset. That needs to go to this one to reset uh, which light should be on and off. So let's see if this actually works. Go to our loader. So it should come to the loader. Stop here. Wait five seconds. 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 Then go back. See if that's working. There we go. Didn't seem as long. Okay, the five seconds includes the time it takes to get to the next station. So I think we're going to change it from five to ten seconds. Yep, go back to our loader. And it should have reset. Looks like it has. And so this should work perfectly now. So it'll wait at the first one for 10 seconds. And then it'll take a few seconds to get to the next one, but then it'll wait there for the remainder of those 10 seconds. Yep. 
So the only thing left to do is to check if these slow down depending on if they're full or not. I can't remember if trains slow down when they're full of items. I don't think they do, but I'll have to look into it. If they don't, then we can change this from to probably six seconds. That way the train will get there and we have about a second for these inserters to activate. And as soon as any of them have activated, this time it gets reset. So here it is, and it's ready to go. Perfect. And let's see. Oh good, we've got iron plates. Now the next thing I want to do is set up the circuit condition that will actually send the train to the storage area. At least a simple part of that circuit condition because it's actually going to be more complex than what we'll do right now. At the moment, the only condition we're going to have is, because we only have one storage train, what we're going to do is say, go there if we know there's a train waiting. That should be a good number, 20 of each, or 10 of each. Do we have any constant combinators? I do not see any. Deposit our construction robots. So how do we know when there's a train here? Well, if we go over to this train stop, because there's actually a train over here, you'll see this constant combinator here. It's actually, it looks like a constant combinator. It's a smart stop signal output. It'll output five values. Uh, the amount of fuel that's in the train, the number of cargo wagons, the number of locomotives, the stop number, and I I cannot remember what the last signal is for. That seems to be a destination number. Or a smart signal number, let's see. It's this one. Ah, if there's a train at the station. So if there's a train and I think station number. I think station number is which numbered station it is in the train's list. Which would make sense. So what we'll do... One, two... Okay, let's just see if we can use that. So we'll get this uh, Smart Train Stop Combinator connected here. I was hoping it would go all the way, but it doesn't look like it's going to reach. We'll go to there then. Let's go over to there and we'll bring this down to this station here. Yep. And this will be a fairly simple circuit. Give it again a destination, just on the green line. The red line, we get that input, and we say if we've got a train at the station. Output our destination. Green to there, not to there, to that one. And yeah, I can do green to there. Light turns on when destination is greater than zero. You are told to go to. Yep, yeah, signal number. It's perfect. Now we should give it a signal number, giving it one, which we give it. And now when we bring a train over here, it should unload that train into this train. So where's our train? It's at the waiting bay. Hmm, is there anything useful for us to do? Why aren't we picking up any iron ore? We've got plenty of iron ore. Okay, let's go. I think this is the bug that I was talking about near the start of this episode. Where's my car? There it is.
What's on this line? Nothing. Hmm. Yeah, iron ore is one. What's its iron ore to negative one? You do. Okay, the condition there has to be wrong. So if there's less than 45k output rate, if red is output red is one. It's, ooh, because there's nothing, it's not getting a signal in. Hmm, that's an issue. Not that way. That way. Give this a signal or a final of one. That should move this train on. Good, perfect. But we're gonna actually change where this train's going to. So what we'll do is we'll pick up some iron ore. We need to add storage loader. And it leaves when its inventory is empty. And it goes... Save that. Did that work? Nope. Yeah, got rid of it. Thought so. Uh, inventory empty. Save on there. There we go. Production bay unload a one. Wait. What did that just do? No, 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 that's not what I wanted. Mm. Production bay unload a one is station number nine. Oh, 10 is here. That's a weird way to order these. These must be ordered. Why would 10 come after 1? Because I put it there. That makes more sense. Okay. Go to station one once you're done. Save that, save that. This train should have a bunch of items in it. Can we see how many items are in from, yep. Okay, you've got about 6,000, that means you're half full. It's fine, go to the storage loader so we can test if this works. It's gonna be slightly annoying because it means that we're going to be filling this storage train up with about 6,000 iron ore. Which we'll want to... Which we'll want to take back, but let's see. Where's the train? Where is the train? No, no, no. Why are you there? Oh! So the thing about smart trains is that because it overrides where the trains go depending on these circuit conditions, if you tell a train to go somewhere manually and it's being told to go to a different station depending on the circuit condition, it could actually change it. Okay, so this train should now be getting told to go there. What are you doing? Circuit signal destination, yeah. Now I've got a giant train in my way. Okay. Why isn't this unloading? This is weird. Will it not unload unless you're at a station? Ooh, that's 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 annoying. Hoping it would unload. Okay, it won't. How's this counter going? Um, I can't actually see what this signal is at. I 
and that's quite annoying. Red line over here. Red is one. Okay, yep, you're outputting one. You're getting a black of one. Because these all have an item in the hand. Okay. Pulse mode is what we will use. Because in this condition, it's constantly resetting. Still getting two, which means one of these wasn't reset. That's super annoying. Oh, which one is it? They're all fine. You. Getting now. Nothing good. Yeah, I can see that counting up. So that's inconvenient. I thought if I use signals, I could get that to work, but nope, that won't work needs to be stopped at a station. Now that might be okay. We might just change those signals to be stations. And they can be basic stations. storage bay. Take away a bit of track. Actually wanted to take it away from there. So that we can set this all up again. Kind of oddly. Load a part three. Load a stage four. Yep. Okay. So from here, we actually want to go. Hmm. hmm. Yep. Stage one to inactivity. Stage two inactivity. Stage 3 in activity and stage 4 in activity and then stage 5 which would be that one until there's a destination. Okay. Let's save that. Let's check our rules. You get a signal number, you get a signal number. Okay. Now load a stage one, two, three, four. That one goes to signal number. Now this is still number two. This there we go. So pretend it had five seconds of inactivity, so it'll go there. That's slightly misaligned. So 
We are there. It's also not aligned correctly. Go there. Still not correct. Just kind of what I expected. Then go there. And then from here, circuit condition and inactivity. Let's go. No end. And just go back to the storage bay. Ooh. Yay! First time I've been killed by a train. Because I took a step down. <sighs> I mean, it's not a vanilla playthrough, so it's not like I'll get the achievement. Well, there, you got to see the first time I was ever killed by a train. But. Yeah, oh. Okay. It's two deaths so far in this playthrough. I should put up a death counter for myself. Yeah. So there's a warning. Trains that are this long, even when they're barely moving, will instantly kill you. Now, what I was going to do, and I don't have... You, you also take iron sticks. at least one of these back. So we don't need that anymore. Well, this is the first stop. Do we have any more train stops? No, we don't. Okay. So you look like you're in the right spot, but you're in the wrong spot. Yeah. I want to fix that up, but when we fix it up in this episode, this episode's gone on a bit longer than I wanted. So I think I'll just fix up the train store uh, positions in the break. Otherwise, yeah, that seems like a good spot to end this episode. So this is Jack B1024 signing off. Have a good day.